All right, Bruce, uh, your show. One of these days, just for fun, I'm going to hit the one that says lead meeting. Just because that would be different. Yeah. Instead of, would. instead of, got it. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the May edition of the San Diego and Imperial County Aries meeting. We're going to get started. Uh, as usual, I'm going to ask folks, even though it's vicarious, remote, and via Zoom, if you are able to do so, please do stand. Remove your cover if you are wearing any indoors, or if you happen to be outdoors and wearing cover. And let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. And ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, folks. Um, so before we get started and before we start rolling into announcements, we will pause briefly, and this is where, if you know how to use Zoom and you know how to raise your hand in Zoom, that would be very important. If not, you might need to take yourself off of mute. You might need to go out and turn your camera on, wave in front of the screen, and our wonderful screening proctors in the background will be looking for any signs of this. When we ask for any new members, folks that have just joined Aries, folks that are newly licensed, people that are joining the meeting for the very first time. This is where you denounce yourself. Let us know who you are, what region of the area, San Diego, Imperial, or otherwise that you might happen to be in and what your interest in Aries is. Any new folks, please come now. See, and Anthony seeing... has his, his hand up. There you go. Good morning, Anthony. Go ahead. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Hope everybody's doing okay. So, yeah, I'm uh, I'm really new. I just got my uh, general license at the beginning of this month, and uh, currently just have a small little handheld. But uh, find it very interesting. I come from a background of electronics and physics and stuff, so it wasn't that difficult for me to uh, get up to speed on the, the information in the training manuals and so forth. So I was looking around, found this uh, group and uh, kind of interested in the idea of helping out in emergencies and things like that. So that's that's kind of where I am at the moment. Um, I'm located down in uh, the very south end of North Park, literally almost on the border between North Park and South Park. So kind of <laughs> almost South Park, I guess, but uh, that's where I'm at, yeah. Very good, welcome aboard. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else new to the group, newly licensed, new to Aries, joining us for the first time? All right, hearing and seeing no additional traffic. Let's go ahead and move the Dave section manager. Announcements ARRL related, please, sir. All right, um, coming up uh, here next month, is the uh, International Digital Contest on the 4th and 5th, followed by VHF Contest on the 11th through the 13th, and then Kids Day on the 18th, and Field Day the 25th and 26th. So a very, uh, very busy June. Uh, and on top of that, tomorrow evening, we have a total lunar eclipse. So. Uh, could be interesting propagation with that going on as well. It uh, seems to change some things periodically. So uh, could be fun. Uh, there's a new grant program for clubs that uh, I send information out to all the club contacts I have. And uh, clubs can apply for grants through the ARRL or uh, they have a bunch of cash ready to uh, distribute it. So if you have a good project, uh, for a club, good time to uh, go out and do that. Um, Bruce? Very good. The um, the upcoming VHF contest, second full weekend in June that Dave was referencing, 
Uh, we're going to try to wrap a little bit of a mini event around that like we have done in the past. Uh, it's probably been about four or five years since we've really, really, really put a focused effort into this. The, um, the intention would be to go out and see, again, take advantage of the opportunity. It's the largest on the air event for VHF, UHF, and up communications in the continental United States. Bigger than the sprints, bigger than any of the other single band events. There's, you know, a concentrated focused effort. There's a lot of folks running around in rovers or mobile vehicles with their stations. Uh, it's a really good time of the year to go out and really play radio if you're able to go out and do so on the VHF and up bands. The, um, the event will start at 11 o'clock Saturday morning. It'll end at 8 o'clock Sunday evening. The rules are pretty much the same as they have been in previous years, but comma. And we'll talk about this probably before the June meeting and an email that detail it. There are some rule changes as far as categories for participation, um, especially as related to digital operations. So here's an opportunity, seriously, and I, I make no joke of this. Here's an opportunity to go out and get a nice certificate from the ARRL recognizing your individual effort being on the VHF and up bands, which is six meters and up, and sometimes only have five or six contacts that you've submitted for <laughs> the event. Um, we literally have seen people get awarded because they've turned in three contacts that they've made and they've won first place in their category with three contacts. I would, of course, hope that you'll make dozens and dozens and dozens of contacts, but that's not always necessary. And sometimes it's not always practical for your schedule. Um, my current plans are to be on the air the entire weekend. I'm trying to work with folks in LA, Orange County, San Bernardino, Riverside, Imperial for the local regional areas and then just south of the border down to Baja, California, uh, trying to go on coordinate efforts with different groups and teams of people that are there, including the Rovers, and then, of course, whatever happens to happen on six meters will be interesting. Uh, this is the beginning, effectively, of six meter season as we normally know it here, at least in Southern California. Other areas of the country are doing really well on the VHF and up bands. Uh, Southern California is usually the last and the hardest, as always, being on the left coast is like that, to, um, to get extra contacts and extra grid squares and have some of that excitement on six meters but remember that if you've not done this before with a vertical antenna and a regular radio and whatever bands that you have you will probably be able to make contacts into la um, over the last couple of years it's been pretty easy during the summer season to be able to make contacts on a regular vertical antenna on two meters and especially on uhf all the way up in the San Bar and to Santa Barbara, um, depending on local weather conditions, inversion layers and things that are fun like that. So it's just a matter of being there in the right place at the right time and listening throughout the day to go out and hear the changing conditions and take advantage of that. We'll have more details on that in the coming in the coming weeks. And we've got, of course, as Dave also mentioned, field day at the end of the month. I would encourage you, if you're not already looking at doing field day individually, like you might have done in the last couple of years with COVID, uh, take a look at the rules, take a look at the rule changes. They've been very modest and very minor. Um, you can still contribute an individual score to a club or an organization. In the past, folks have done that as members of Aries and contributed their score to the San Diego Aries group. Uh, I would believe with COVID still sort of being in a quasi state of either being accepted and people dealing with the ramifications of it and being vaccinated and being protected and being outdoors, I would expect and I am hearing that there are probably going to be more clubs and outdoor activities this year than there probably have been in the last couple of years. So you might look to your local region, your local area that you happen to be in, look for groups that are putting on outdoor events and participate in one of those as well. If not, just stop by and visit, see how they're doing and just go out there and see how things are done in the field by different groups and different teams of people. 
that's about all that I have to bolt on to what Dave was working with. And we'll go to Rob next. Any training related information or updates, please? Bruce, thank you. I will share screen. Can you see that now? You're good. Yes. Okay. So uh, today's presentation, uh, uh, let me see, don't see the presenter yet in the waiting room. So uh, we may be uh, going to plan B later. Uh, next month, June Aries meeting, uh, will be a uh, discussion about field day uh, coming up, VHF contest as Bruce mentioned, uh, and kids day. Uh, uh, we'll be discussing those things on uh, the next Aries meeting. The follow on uh, Aries meeting, July meeting, will be field day uh, anecdotes and tall tales about how well everybody did during field day. August meeting, we've got a presenter lined up from the San Diego County Office of Emergency Services. Uh, Mr. Dan Vasquez will be telling us about updates to uh, emergency planning in our county. And in September, uh, we've got a representative coming in from the San Diego County Animal Rescue uh, Group uh, to tell us about uh, latest developments and uh, maybe try to recruit some people. And, and some people on our call today right here are members very active in the San Diego County Animal Rescue. Uh, very good things they do uh, during emergencies. Changing slides, there we go. Uh, Bruce mentioned uh, the uh, VHF contest. So we've got, uh, once again, that's the weekend of uh, June uh, 11th and 12th. Uh, we'll, it starts at 11 o'clock in the morning on Saturday and ends at eight o'clock at night on Sunday. And uh, we'll set up rally times as we've done before at uh, on Saturday at uh, 12 noon and 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. Probably do the same thing on Sunday. Uh, nobody plays for the continuous time. We all have lives. Uh, we play for an hour. And then we go away and we come back and play for another hour as conditions change and as uh, fresh meat shows up uh, to talk to us, uh, then we all jump in that person and I'll log our contacts and, uh, and feel good about it and get our points. Uh, if you can see my virtual background there, I've got the, uh, the grid squares up. So uh, as Bruce mentioned, going up to uh, Los Angeles, depending upon your equipment uh, can be done from here in San Diego, if you're in sort of a coastal spot in San Diego, you can reach up the coast. So it's easy. We usually talk to people like in Signal Hill and Palos Verdes Peninsula are easy to get. Also, sometimes there are rovers in the mountains uh, that are easy to get. So uh, we'll be able to score a lot of extra grid squares uh, doing that on the, the VHF uh, contest bands, uh, six meters and up, as Bruce mentioned. We'll send out an email later describing the details in the contest. And you know, this is practice for the big one. So future Aries planned events, uh, the next simplex net, uh, which will take the place of the repeater net on uh, Thursday, June 30th. That is the fifth Thursday uh, and it's in June. And so it'll be a simplex net, uh, more on that later. Uh, last meeting, uh, Bruce mentioned the San Diego County Hospital's full scale exercise for your calendar is coming up on Thursday, July 21st. Not everybody can participate in a work day exercise, but if you can, great. Uh, I usually take a half day off in the morning. And uh, so we start the net usually at eight o'clock. We're starting to fill in uh, positions. Uh, please RSVP to me if you are able to participate. Uh, we're gonna try to cover 30 locations if we can. Uh, we're not going to send anybody in alone. We're not going to send a new person uh, by themselves. So you're always going to go with an experienced person. It's been a long time since we had an on-site, uh, almost three years, uh, county hospital drill. Uh, I know that other counties around the state are doing their exercises in different months of the year. San Diego chose uh, July for the San Diego exercise. It's been a long time since we did anything. In our heads, we probably think we can still do everything. But we know we're rusty uh, in uh, coordinating uh, 50 operators on the air. And uh, we'll probably reserve uh, maybe about 15 repeaters. We'll set up simplex frequencies. 
so we can move uh, much voice traffic and we will uh, dust off our WinLink equipment, do all of the updates and uh, send hundreds of WinLink exer uh, exercise uh, emails uh, back and forth in form. So that once again, that'll all be happening on uh, July 21st. Next Aries activity day is uh, the fifth Saturday of uh, comes in July, July 30th. Uh, it'll be in the same locations probably as other. We're always looking for new locations. If you live in an area uh, and you say, how come there's never an activity day near me? Well, please go ahead and uh, try to set something up in your neighborhood. Uh, or if you're not able to do that, uh, please participate in an activity day at one of the other half dozen locations around the section uh, that have been setting it up. We're very appreciative for the planners who have been setting up those different locations around the county, uh, making res reservations for space and coordinating equipment and making things happen during the activity. So, much appreciated. And as part of that activity day, we will conduct another uh, HF net uh, on 60 meters, an interoperability net. Uh, we had a lot of positive feedback from the, uh, the last activity day. We had people checking in with their non ham call signs. So we had people from uh, Army Mars, Air Force Mars, uh, shares all checking in using their call signs for those services. And uh, we also had representatives checking in using ham call signs for different government agencies that they were representing. So that was very good. So we'll be doing that 60 meter uh, net again uh, on uh, July 30th as part of Aries Activity Day. Uh, Miramar Air Show has announced it's going ahead uh, the weekend of uh, September 23, 24, 25. If you don't know, we support uh, lost and found, mostly children lost and found. We patrol the crowds looking for distressed people. And uh, if you are able to participate uh, for a half day or whole day on any of those days in September, uh, please RSVP to me and uh, we'll plug you into the slot. Uh, it's usually uh, we get uh, preferred parking and uh, take a shuttle bus into the flight line and uh, have a good time. We take uh, time off from patrolling the crowd, take pictures of aircraft, wander around and uh, uh, try to eat some waffle cones. And a reminder to everybody that uh, we have uh, different websites for uh, San Diego Aries. We've got uh, uh, the uh, .NET uh, website has our comp plan task book and we use the uh, registration there as our membership roster baseline. Uh, ECs have access to the SDG Aries.NET website so they can see who is uh, an Aries member in their area. Uh, the email reflector, as you probably know, is on uh, groups.io. Uh, and we also have a YouTube channel where we put uh, recordings of our these Aries meetings and we also have some training clips. And Bruce, that's all I have. I will stop share and turn it back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Any questions for Rob before we continue? not seeing or hearing. So uh, some fill for what Rob had just presented. The, um, the ARRL VHF event that we talked about, touching on that again, this is a really good practical exercise because this is candidly, as I mentioned, the most uh, activity we'll probably see on the VHF, UHF and up bands uh, throughout the year without using repeaters. So there's two things that you have a immediate challenge and an immediate opportunity for, and that is working without repeaters, seeing who you can talk to, again, finding out who you can talk to reliably over the course of a day or a weekend, but also having to deal with the contention that you're going to run into with multiple conversations happening on a simplex frequency, overlapping conversations, confusion about who is talking to who, <laughs> and who's on first versus second, third, fourth, and fifth, whether or not somebody inside your area is talking to someone outside your area and the timing in between QSOs just happens to be so good that you're thinking you're carrying on a conversation with somebody in Santa Barbara, but you're really not. Um, it's actually quite fascinating. It's an experience that you should have to go out and build on your experience levels for dealing with the real thing. Uh, when we don't have repeaters, when we do have contention, when we do have other interference, when we do have things going on that are unexpected. Um, that's another one of the functional roles I see as being 
very beneficial in that event and candidly field bay as well the um the net we just had a couple of nights ago on thursday some real challenging things happen there not really sure what happened or why but we are going to change the format up a little bit so don't be surprised by this in the future don't be surprised when you hear that we're going to go out and put a slight change in place which mimics what i would hope would be more of a real world scenario net control will continue for thursday night primary machine will continue for thursday night but expect that there will be a secondary net control operator assigned that we hope will track and follow along and that way if we do have to pass the baton and move from net control number one because something has happened either announced or unannounced we want to have net control number two pick up that slack almost immediately, run with the ball and continue to carry on the net as we had already started. So look for that small change coming up in the future. Again, that would mimic what we would be doing in real life anyway. For any real event, any unplanned event, that's exactly what we would expect to have happen. Um, for field day, again, I mentioned that you know, there's going to be opportunities in and around the county. Um, if you have any questions about that, please do reach out, ask via the email reflector, uh, not only for coordination, but for ideas and what to do and what you might be interested in doing. So don't be shy. Don't go out there and, you know, run up to that date and go, gosh, I didn't really have anything planned. You've got roughly six weeks from this weekend to go out and do that. Um, and, and get some ideas together, get some coordination together, find a friend, find a buddy, find a partner, find a club, or just do it on your own and see how you wing it, operating in the field or operating in your backyard or operating in your front yard, but basically not necessarily operating from your home gear. Uh, the fallback would be that you can operate from home, from your home equipment. Uh, we hope that you do take advantage of getting on the air in some other mode or methodology. And we do understand as well that not everyone will be able to go out and take advantage of that. I don't really have any other fill for this particular meeting. Uh, I will announce that we do have some upcoming opportunities with other served agencies here in California and in San Diego that we're going to be looking into. Uh, Robin mentioned that we are looking forward to the July full scale exercise for the hospital system. There will probably be other breakout opportunities throughout the rest of the year to work with some other served agencies. So be aware that we will probably not be focused only on the July event, but have a couple of other distributed events before the, the year closes out. And we'll probably be asking for some volunteers, asking for some mentors, asking for some assistance in those areas. Any questions? Not hearing any. Any updates on our presenter status? Uh, no text messages, no voicemails. Let's move to plan B. All right, I have something I can throw together here real quick. Dave is amazing. <laughs> well, let me see if I can bring this thing up. 